Hi, my name is Beth Hiley here for Board Game Geek. I'm sitting uh, once again with Clay Ross from Capstone Games, and you've brought us the second game that you're debuting here for Spiel Digital, which is uh, <laughs> Curious Cargo. Oh, I really tripped up over that one. Curious Cargo. There we go. <laughs> Yeah. I should say, Clay, going, you should cap it off with Curious Cargo. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is our, uh, our one of our biggest releases this year. Um, this is the successor, well, I guess mini successor to Pipeline from last year. Um, Ryan Courtney um, has this wonderful tiling mechanism that he created with Pipeline. And a lot of people really like Pipeline, uh, but for the those of you not familiar with it's really, it's a really crunchy game. Oh no, my internet is unstable right now. Uh, I'm trying to do, is it coming through okay right now? Okay. Okay, sorry guys. Uh, but yeah, so this is more of the tile laying element from Pipeline, and it's all about constructing a network on your player board. And what you want to do is you want to ship your goods to your past your opponent um, while you while your opponent's trying to do the same thing. You want to receive their goods for points as well. Um, so it's a it's a nice game of building up a network on your on your table and shipping out those goods and hopefully your opponent doesn't collect those on their end. So it's it's a pretty cool game. Well, why don't you take us through a turn? Because the, the structure of a turn is also like really turbo fast as well. Yeah, so setup is fast. Uh, the turns are quick. It just plays really quickly. Um, so what you would do on your turn is um, there's two phases. The first phase is construction, and that's all about building your network on your player board. Um, there's a drawback there, and you would you can draw some tiles out of there and play them on your player board. And I, I want to mention the game comes with six player boards per player, um, so you've got tons of variability for for that uh, different shapes and layouts for your factory. Um, and and uh, so you'll play with the tiles that have um, the little light white background, and you can lay those on your player board. Yeah, and you can see there's two colors, the red and blue. Um, and you want to connect your machines, um, which are there in the corner on your player board, to those loading docks on the left or right side of your player board by using those tiles. Yes. So you want to try to, um, yeah, this is exactly what you're doing. Yeah, so you've got this red line coming out um, from a couple machines, and you want to get that to connect to the left side of your player board, which is your shipping side. And that's when you will be able to ship things on trucks. And on the right side of your player board is the receiving end. So if you've connected a full line of tiles to either end, you can either ship or receive, depending on which side of the player board you've connected to. Um, so if we could, can we just draw a couple more tiles out of the bag just to show the different variability of, of the tiles? Yeah. So on the back side, I, I'll mention that later, but yeah, so you'll have a few of these tiles um, to play with. And for this, for this version, we're only playing with the light side of the tiles. The dark side is a, an advanced mode that comes in the game. Um, but yeah, you're, you've got this hand of, of tiles and you want to connect to either end of your player board. And uh, once you make a full connection to the side of your player board, you can have, um, you can call in trucks. You've got these tiles and you're gonna be playing them and try to connect them to those loading docks. And what that's going to do is allow you to call in various trucks, um, which are these tiles there. So and Lincoln, why don't you take that last uh, double red one and actually uh, make it touch the six on for us, what is the top of that board? Yeah, this is the the spatial element of the game where you're, yeah. you're trying to maneuver the tiles. There you go. So now go. that is on the player's right side, and that's going to be their receiving side. Oh, that's true. I suppose we need uh, we need to get the uh, the export side, I guess, output side, input side, output side. There we go. Yeah, but I mean. 
you also have a hand of cards after you're done building um, you can play cards to call in trucks and those will go on your shipping side which are on the left side of your player board so you could play any one of those cards and you just pick up the matching truck tile and that truck will appear on your left side of the game board um, so pretty much you're strategizing the size of trucks uh, there's a lot of strategy involved with that and again, the goal of the game here is to ship out as many goods as possible. That will give you a lot of points. Another way to get points is um, the more connections that you've made on the left or right side of your player board will give you a lot of points. Um, also, receiving your opponent's goods will give you more points as well. Um, and you're going you're gonna to do this. There's four ways to end the game. Um, one of the most common ways is to ship uh, nine of your goods. And once you've done that, the game will end and you'll go to see who won the game. Um, one cool thing about the game is you have to ship at least two of each colored good to be considered for the winning. Um, if you haven't done that, you automatically lose. Um, if both players fail to ship two of their goods, they then it ends in a draw, but that's very rare. Um, another cool thing with the game, it comes with, I mentioned it came with six player boards on the back side of those shipping boards that, which hold all of your goods. There is a third color that's introduced. Yes. Yeah, so we can flip that over and I'll show you purple. Yeah. The purple comes into play and then you will use the back side of the pipe tiles that, come, that you drew from the bag. And you'll see that there's three colors on the backs of those tiles. And it makes it even more challenging to achieve connections uh, because now you've introduced a third color on the same tile. So you know, what I, there's a what lot I of- found so- what I found so intriguing about this is not only are you trying to figure out how the tiles orient and, you know, trying to balance out blue and red, but also as the trucks start lining up on one side that you have to start trying to aim for a particular number and the trucks will move. They'll slide up as a new truck comes in. So suddenly, whereas maybe I was aiming to connect that to a four, oh shoot, now the spot I was aiming for is now up at seven and I got to rethink this. And I found that yeah. that little twist to be very, very, very mind bendy in a pleasant way. Yeah, you hit the nail on the head with that. It's definitely a challenge. Um, there's some mechanics in there where you can really disrupt your opponent's shipping system, um, which is really fun to play with. Um, I also like trying to figure out the order in which you want to play your trucks so you can maximize um, your connections. One of the cool things is you can stack these tiles on top of each other to make different connections or if you if you're trying to connect with a blue line to one of your loading docks and it's not really you're not really getting the right tile you can stack tiles on top of each other to kind of craft your own network um, so you've got that three-dimensional tile laying element to the game which is really nice for craft you know being creative and trying to figure out which way which, what's the best way to connect those pipe tiles well and I think that really cuts down on any potential feelings of frustration if you're kind of waiting for that perfect tile and by random chance you're just not drawing it. You can just say, okay, throw, ditch that plan. Let me put a tile on top of something else. Let me just completely rethink this and go in a different direction and maybe that's better. Yeah, exactly. That's We really wanted that because you're constrained to this area of your player board. Whereas in Pipeline, you could just build out on your own personal tableau um, as far as you wanted, but here you've got this, these boundaries. Um, and there's tons of bonuses in the game. Um, as you cover up those little gear icons on the player board, you're going to get some bonus turns and bonus actions. Um, as you make more connections, um, the little forklift tokens on your, on the turn order track, as you progress down that track by making more and more connections, you're going to unlock new abilities, get some cards, possibly get some points for the end game scoring. Um, really fun stuff to just kind of keep that carrot dangled in front of you. So you're, you're trying to get more and more, more things. 
And particular kudos to those forklift tokens because those are quite delightful. <laughs> Who knew that a forklift would be a piece that you'd kind of want to go squee about? <laughs> I know. Yeah. So Bridget and Delicado, uh, she's the graphic designer for this. Uh, Quan Chai Moria did the artwork. And both of them had done a phenomenal job of bringing this game to life and putting such a fun theme on it and, and really making characters pop and I just, I, I love the little wooden token designs as well. Um, just the different creatures and characters that are introduced in the game are just really unique for us. And we're really fortunate to to work with those two. And Clay, if you don't mind, I actually think I'm going to uh, perhaps use Lincoln as my hands to kind of walk through what maybe a turn would be if I was the player board on the left side of the screen, since he's put out a few sample pieces on the right side of the screen. So assuming that this was my turn and, and I was I have three. What would you call three, three construction actions? Is that I'm trying to remember the language from the rule book. Yeah, you're right. So you're going to have you get to do three things and you get three action points and you can either draw from the tile bag or play one of the tiles from your hand. And so let's say, let, let me, uh, let's draw one from the bag as one of my three things that I'm doing. We can just plunk that down on the left side of the board there to say, ta-da, this is what I got. Okay, lots of blue. Mm, why don't you draw again? I, I, <laughs> I feel like maybe I need something with a little red on it. Oh, that's more interesting. Okay, so for my third thing, I think I will put that the red and blue one um, so it lines up, uh, touch the red touching the, oh, this is sorry. I'm going to let you place it, Lincoln, because me trying to describe it is going to be a nightmare. So you choose where you want it to go. I'll just say my third thing is Lincoln chooses where it goes. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> and then we'll and just push that all blue one to the side since I didn't have enough actions to be able to push that. But that's still in my hand, correct, Clay? Like I could choose to lay that down so in some future turn. Exactly. But you have in the middle of your shipping board, which is the smaller rectangular one, there's a, an area called storage and that can hold two tiles. Um, and you'll be stacking these tiles on top of each other um, a, as you play the game, because typically you're, you're going to have a pile of these as, as you gather these uh, different tiles. Now, so that would be the end of your be, turn. Right. I was just going to say, where does the, where does my chance to play cards come into that? Now, now, once you end game, if the end game has happened, you go to scoring, but then you go to um, the trucking phase, and that's when you're going to be able to use your cards. And these are multi-use cards on depending on what you want to do. So if we could show a card on the screen, I can break it down real quick. So you get two action points, um, essentially, in this phase. Um, if you're going to call a truck in to visit your facility because you've got uh, some connections that you can ship goods, um, you can call in various trucks. Uh, this truck is a size four truck and it would cost two of your two action points to have this truck come to your facility and you would pick the matching tile and it would come on the left side of your player board. Um, another option is to discard this card and you can get the number of tiles depicted on the bottom right, and you would draw those from the bag and they would go into your storage area. Um, and another option is to get rid of two tiles and you can draw a card. But most people in the beginning of the game, they, they'll pass or um, discard a card for more tiles because you it's all about building up your um, network. So yeah. That's and then everyone does have a, a couple of those uh, single tile splitters that have the four way that it, I guess if you kind of designed yourself into a hole, yeah. even with being able to build on top tiles on top of tiles, you could use that that splitter just to give you a lot more flexibility and have it go in every direction. Super powerful uh, tile. It's very difficult to get. Um, you have to. There's a couple ways to get it by filling up trucks, but most of the time you have to exchange some bonus tokens. Uh, there's a hierarchy with these uh, bonus tokens, which I, I'm not going to get into, but 
um, you'll eventually be able to unlock the splitter tokens. And they are limited in supply, but they are so versatile and you can achieve a lot with one of those small tokens. You can potentially gain three connections by using that token. So it's a lot of a lot of room to play with on those. Well, and the fact that yes. uh, adding that whole purple piece is another layer that you can add in as well that you don't necessarily, I think in the rule book it re recommended not starting with the purple just because that does make the game harder. <laughs> Yeah, we really wanted to stress that uh, in the rule book. So when you're reading the rule book, it just shows the two color version. And at the very, very end, it just lets you know, hey, there's a night shift variant. We're calling it the night shift. Um, <laughs> and you can, you can use the purple and oh my goodness, it is so difficult. I am absolutely horrible at the purple side. It's, <laughs> it's very challenging and to play it well, you have to think strategically and long-term strategy is, is very important. Well, let's talk a little bit so, about yeah, I mean, players curious part of this and is when a, it's available. Is, sorry, Beth, I, I think I'm cutting out a little bit. What'd you say? I just said, it, you know, let's move on to talking a little bit about how many players how long do you think a full game would take us and when it's going to be available? Um, so this is a two player game. It's in the same box. If you're familiar with Watergate, it's a small square box and your first game will probably be 45 minutes, maybe an hour. Um, but it's typically a 30 minute game. Um, once you know how to play and, and are familiar with it. Um, and we're going to have a retail release on November 4th which is in about two weeks from now, um, it's, it's coming in. So if you pre-ordered it, the game comes with a whole bunch of bonus player boards um, and some bonus tokens as well as a, as a thank you for pre-ordering. So, um, but yeah, it's, it's a small package. It's a, it's a tiny box, but when you unbox it, there's just so much stuff in there. It's incredible. Yeah. It's a great I'm realizing that you've fit uh, six different versions of player boards for each player yeah. in the box the size of Watergate? Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> there's a lot of value there. So we're, we're looking at expanding it as well. There's some ideas Ryan has. Yeah, these are the other player boards. So you can see kind of the different layouts. Uh, they're all double-sided. Um, so there's one for each player. And there's some really challenging ones in there as well. Um, I think we have some of the promo player boards in there as well. But yeah, there's there's just so much replayability with this game. It's fantastic. And Ryan did a really good job at just coming up with some unique and fun ideas for it. So, but yeah. I always find it fascinating, game. yeah, to take a, a, a big, large, huge, crunchy game and pull out one element that was particularly creative or appealing or addictive. <laughs> And turning that right, into its yeah. own game, I, I think I'm I'm quite fascinated by how well that works sometimes. And I think this is a great example of uh, when a when a mechanic could basically stand on its own. Yeah, and so if you're from, if you're familiar with Pipeline, that's it's that's pretty much what it is 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 building that network of, of pipe tiles from that game and playing with it and being really creative. You can stack them on top of each other. There's, there's really no limits on this one. Now, I know we had uh, shown an earlier capstone game uh, on the feed today, which was New York Zoo. Uh, but um, And we talked a little bit about other capstone projects coming up. But was there anything else you wanted to share about other things that are in the uh, pipeline? <laughs> hey, <laughs> speaking of pipeline, uh, we do have an expansion coming for it. Um, it's going to be called Emerging Markets. Um, we've teased the box cover on, uh, on our social media with Ian O'Toole. Um, but this is going to be a modular expansion um, that's going to provide so much like variability. or re The game already has infinite replayability. Um, it really does. But this is just going to add another layer of it as well while enhancing some of the other aspects of the game. So really excited for this one. We're probably, I don't know, start 
showcasing this maybe in November or December this year and get some pre-orders rolling for that. And speaking of pre-orders, is the pre-order still open uh, to get Curious Cargo if people did want to get those those goodies that came along with the pre-order? Yeah, um, we're actually uh, keeping a close eye on inventory. Right now, we're like, I want to say like 92 to 95% sold out of the entire print run. So it's getting really close. We're probably going to have to turn it off um, next week sometime just to make sure that we didn't oversell accidentally. So <laughs> it's, it's just, really, it's been a really successful wonderful. campaign so far. So, yeah, that's yeah. great. Well, Clay, um, I want to thank you as always for uh, giving us your time and letting us take a quick look at Curious Cargo. If you, if you guys are interested in that, go pre-order it right now. Sounds like you don't have much time to wait. This is being published by Capstone Games. And Clay, a disembodied voice from beyond, he is here. Thank you so much for joining us today. 